Education Lab at Columbia Architecture has been around since the 1970s when it started as an entirely student democratic experiment. So over time we've come together and it's something that is both sort of run in the sense that students staff and work in this space and keep it running along with me in that we have a sort of an overall sense and conversation among the faculty and the students about what this place should be and what machines we should have. One of the big changes that I've made here at the school is to kind of rethink uh, making at the school and expand our fabrication lab to really become a maker space. This is a very interesting moment where students and faculty are hybridizing what we call the analog and the digital. So it's not just about fetishizing the digital and being cutting edge and having million dollar robots and doing research but really bringing together old ways of thinking through making and casting and and uh, and using wood and with the highest technology of 3D printing and 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 milling and so there's a lot of kind of ori originality that's coming out of that hybridizing the first day of classes uh, I was really interested in building um, a set of shelves for our apartment and I think that um, dialogue really got me feeling invested in the space, knowing that it was a place that was open to anybody to pursue creative projects, whether it was related to a studio or other classes. And I think what I love so much about how the shop has been evolving over the past couple years is that it's really been open to embracing people's interests. Whenever someone has a project that we don't have a tool for, we'll order the tool. Um, it's been expanding a lot from just being a general wood shop. One of the things that we've tried to do here in the fabrication lab is be as interdisciplinary as possible. Um, we have at least five different programs working within the graduate school here. And one of our big missions and sort of reboot of the shop is to find a way for them all to get as much mileage and sort of innovation out of the space as possible. In, on the operational end, what we've done is reconfigure our sort of training and access technique to be as agnostic as possible to two levels of experience that people have coming in. So we make our training as teachable to historic preservation, as we do to urban design, as we do to architecture. So everybody learns the sort of same concepts in the beginning, and then they can sort of perform together and materials in the shop uh, to the same level. And then when people see what each other are working on, that is not necessarily something that they might normally work on. There's an instant conversation that just proliferates and explodes. As a student, you have all these resources, especially uh, for the last two years. I, um, Josh really make this place very, very reachable, like accessible to students. And you can come here like 24 seven and you can build whatever you want here just with your own materials. Also, they really make the, uh, like the price is super cheap. Like if you want to depend on elsewhere, you need to spend a lot more money. When we think of, of a more creative and sustainable world for the future, you know, it's important that we think where the materials come from and how do we hybridize them and how we think of reusing waste in original ways. And so it's much more than just kind of fabrication. It's thinking through the life cycle of materials. And that really starts in the makerspace.